Hi there, welcome to this week's edition of Farming Today. I'm Christopher Holder. Farming Today is a presentation of Matrix Video Productions and Advertising and is brought to you in association with Caribbean Chemicals and the Ministry of Agriculture. On this week's program, we bring you a special program. This is, of course, Pesticides Awareness Week in Guyana. And, of course, we have with us three representatives of organizations in Guyana. We have from the Pesticides and Toxic Chemicals Control Board, Ms. Tricia David. She is, of course, the registrar of that body. We have Mr. Kuldip Ragnot, Extension Manager of the Guyana Rice Development Board, and Mr. Kami Sharma, Registered Pharmacist and Secretary of the Pharmacy and Poison Board Ministry of Health. We will be talking about this particular observance this week as Guyana joins uh, countries within the Caribbean in observing uh, this uh, particular week. I'd like to welcome my guests on this uh, special edition of Farming Today. I will start with uh, Tricia, of course, the lady in the group, and uh, she is, of course, the Rose Among Thorns. And <laughs> we'll be talking about this special awareness. Guyana joins uh, for the first time um, a grouping within uh, the region to observe uh, this particular week. Give a background to this observance and um, Guyana is now joining in, in that uh, observance. Well, Pesticide Awareness Week was always being observed. Uh, it started eight years ago in the region and it's in a collaboration with FAO who's been supporting what is called the Coordinating Group of Pesticide Control Boards in the Caribbean. Um, for the first time, we're holding it in Guyana, and we're hoping to make it an annual thing and continue to join with the countries in the region and have Pesticide Awareness Week. But one of the key reasons we've recognized the need for it in Guyana is because there is so much happening where pesticides is concerned in Guyana. These are a group of chemicals that are widely used in agriculture in Guyana and in households in Guyana. And a lot of Persons out there don't know what are some of the benefits and some of the risk associated with using pesticides. While the board is there and we're mostly regulatory in nature, we've seen the need for a lot of public awareness, letting persons know what these products are, what are the benefits they can have, and of course, what are some of the dangers that are associated. And so we saw the need for this week and we're hoping that everybody across our country is going to be able to gather something at the end of this week and they're going to be able to take it away with them and they're going to know this is what pesticides are and these are some of the things that they need to do to protect themselves. So what have you put together for this week of observance? What have been happening so far? Okay, well so far we started on Sunday with uh, a feature on Farmers Connection um, on NCN and we're also having some trainings done countrywide. We had one um, on Monday in West Burbies and today we're having, uh, we had another program on NCN. There's also a number of programs on the televisions on a daily basis and on the radios that are coming to you. So we want persons to just tune in. There's a lot of information coming your way. We're going to be in Escriba tomorrow um, in Charity Pomeroon, where we're going to be working with farmers there. And on Thursday, we have our open day at our location at Nari Compound. Um, there's going to be a mini exhibition there. And then on Friday, well, it's a national holiday, but those information are still going to be coming to you for Friday and Saturday via the airwaves. All right. Um, as, as we have this observance, what is the role of, of your organization in all this? Well, GRDB, the fact that, that I come from that organization, we are, we are the regulatory body where rice is concerned. Rice, as we are all aware, in the rice sector, a lot of pesticides are being used. By virtue of the fact that the pesticides are used in the, in the rice sector, and having recognized that, we, are, we have come together in, in the form of being a member of the board to, to make our contribution and to assist the board in, in its role in, in regulating the use of pesticides. So in terms of, of what is happening this week, whatever, whatever takes place and whatever awareness is being, is being created or is being carried out, we have to be a part of that because 
the rice sector, like I said, it's agriculture. And Tricia just mentioned pesticides are used in agriculture. It's used in household and to some extent in industry as well. So whatever takes place in terms of pesticide awareness, we have to be part and parcel of that. And we will want to help in the effort to make pesticide use uh, more safe and, and to create, help in create that awareness among, among farmers. At your level, is there an ongoing program of education that yeah. will complement the efforts of the board? In yes, terms of safe handling and use of pesticides. Yeah, definitely. We, we in our training program at the farmer field school level, we do as, as part of our training, we also um, you know, bring to farmers or we, we train farmers or educate farmers on, on, the, on the use of or, or safe use of pesticides and in terms of, of application, in terms of, of um, management, how, how, how pesticide can be used to, to manage various pests in, in industry. And we also have weeds, we also have fungus. So we, we, there are a lot of, a lot of um, well, harmful, harmful um, pests in the industry. And, and therefore, pesticides will have to be used, whether it's in the form of fungicide, whether it's in the form of herbicide, whether it's, it is in the form of insecticides. So our training will take on board the fact that we have these, these um, pests in the industry. For example, paddy bog and rice and they have pesticides that, that are being used to, 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 to control or to manage that. And uh, we, we bring to farmers at the, far, at the field school level um, training as to how to manage not just paddy bog alone, but early season pests, diseases, and things like that. So yes, we, we, we do have that. We do have ongoing training uh, at the level of, of the field school, um, and that's carried out by the Extension Department. Having said so, from time to time, we also involve the board in, in, in our training activities as well. So we, it, it's kind of complementing the work that we are doing at, at, the, at the board level. I want to I focus attention now on the Ministry of Health's contribution in all this. Of course, you would have seen uh, or at least been exposed to, to knowledge of the if harmful effects of those who do not follow the safety guidelines for handling and use of pesticides. W what has been your contribution um, in this area, in this observant for the past week? Well, um, Chris, um, as a member of the board, I'm pleased to be here on this program. And like my colleague was speaking just now, in terms of the rice industry, this forms a major part of our economy, rice production. Uh, what I want to say is not just health. Um, the issue is we are looking at two of the major sectors in Guyana, the health sector and the agriculture sector. Agriculture, as you know, is the backbone of our economy. And uh, you may ask, or people might ask, we might ask ourselves, what is the relation the pesticides have to do with health? And this is the issue. It's, it's, it's about pesticide awareness, yes, but it's not just a one week of activity. It will have to be a long term program that is now being, uh, people are now becoming aware of. It, uh, because the pesticide board is one of the newer boards that has been formed in Guyana, and it's one of the most important um, boards um, in terms of the kind of members it's made up of. It's multidisciplinary. They are other people who are experts, like Dr. Kerry Ragnar and others who are not here. But um, these are people who contribute towards the whole issue of pesticide awareness. It's the need for effective use of pesticides. Why? Pesticides, you know, are drugs. And in the old days, we referred to pesticides as garden poisons. And drugs, as we know, are all poisons, depending on how you use them. They can either be used for good or for bad. Uh, depending on the dosages. So when farmers become aware of their role in this process, we could have a more effective pesticide management. We could have a, a healthier population because with agricultural production, we are looking at two key issues here, development, and we're talking about de development in terms of the economy growing, and we're talking about the health of the nation. If you don't have a healthy nation, and you, you wouldn't have development. It's, it's kind of linked, interlinked. And it goes both ways. So I would try to answer it in that way. It's both an uh, intersectoral issue that is integrated with each other. And it's no accident, Chris, that you have the 
former senior minister of health being the minister of agriculture because the best people is needed in agriculture in order to promote uh, development. And you can judge from that where the two areas are carrying us. And in fact, I would even go further. The environmental issue, like we, my friend is talking about, the harmful nature of how you store and dispose of chemicals would involve other agencies like the EPA, Environmental Protection Agency, which we have representatives on the board as well. So it's a, inter, a multi-sectoral and a intersectoral, I would say, and a multidisciplinary approach to the whole question of production and health, having a healthy nation so that we are economically viable and, you know, we can enter the global markets as a country that is now recognized as one on the move. All right. Coming back to Tricia, um, when, when one hears the, the name of your, your board, the Pesticides and Toxic Chemicals Control Board, it's a, it's a mouthful. Um, define for us the role of, of your entity. Okay, well, the board is mainly mandated to actually monitor pesticides and toxic chemicals in an entire life cycle approach. Um, and we work also with a lot of the international conventions that are out there now to assist us with bettering chemicals management in Guyana. So we look at imports, we monitor imports, all chemicals, all pesticides coming into the country and monitored by the board through a registration and licensing um, procedure. We monitor distribution, who are the distributors. We license them to do so. Then we have the vendors, vendors countrywide. Everybody who sells pesticides have to be licensed countrywide. So persons should not be buying from somebody who doesn't actually have a license from the board. So they're also licensed. Then we work with uh, pest control operators who are a new group that we just started working with a couple years now. Um, they're actually the, 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 the industrial persons who do house treatments, um, restaurants, hotels, hospitals, schools. They would treat for basic household pests and those kind of things. And then we also have the farmers right down at the end of the chain. We look at educating them, training them, helping them to develop the skills that they, they use in field in terms of pesticide application, what they buy, how they go ahead and use it, what they need to do to protect themselves. So we go right through the food chain and now we're actually doing um, a look at disposal because we have an issue with disposal of pesticide containers and it's becoming an issue for Guyana. And so we're actually looking at advising them and putting some mechanisms in place now to actually cope with that. Your, your body is is regulatory more or less um, in terms of enforcing um, compliance how do how do you deal with that well we have a totally enf um, enforcement unit an enforcement and inspection unit attached to the board and that unit actually handles um, all aspects of enforcing the regulations in terms of, okay, what are the import requirements, what are distributor requirements, what are vendors requirements, and we actually work to enforce those, ensure we police the country, basically ensuring that all parties that come into us are adhering to what the requirements are. But at the end of the day, um, there's a lot that we actually work with in terms of enforcement. We have an issue with illegal pesticides that often come across our borders that we have to, to address. Um, we have the issue of vendors who might vend both legal and illegal pesticides that we have to address. And so one of the things that we, we, we ask the public to do is help us with enforcement. And they can by simply calling us. We have a hotline number and providing information and, and, and help us to change some of the you know, things that are happening out there. The hotline could also be for persons to report yes. illegal chemical Correct. usage or storage, whatever, or Correct. importation. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, a lot, a lot of your efforts um, at education um, aimed at helping people to safely use, uh, handle pesticides. Not only handle, but there's the aspect of storage, um, proper protective wear. Um, and we have this infomercial that we've just completed, um, which shows uh, proper um, gear for, for the application of pesticides. But it also shows some of uh, the bad things that you can do that could be deadly. Um, let's take a look at that and uh, we come back and talk about it.
Farmers, do you know that while preparing or applying pesticides, the possibility for exposure is constantly around you? Picking up and moving pesticide containers that may have been contaminated, carelessly opening a container, spills or splashback during mixing are all ways you can be exposed to harmful chemicals even before you begin spraying. When you begin application, you can be exposed in several ways. Leaky spray cans can deposit chemicals onto your skin. Driving or walking through your spray mist can result in extremely high levels of exposure. Even brushing against recently sprayed leaves can expose you to pesticides. That is, if you do not wear the proper protective clothing, this will protect the user from direct contact with the chemicals. Always wear the following protective gear when handling any pesticide. Long sleeved shirt and pants or coveralls. Elbow length chemical resistant gloves. Chemical resistant boots and a respirator. Wearing these protective gears will protect you from the harmful effects of chemical exposure and possible absorption through the skin. A message from the Pesticides and Toxic Chemicals Control Board, Ministry of Agriculture. In this instance, the farmer is barefoot, his pants rolled up to his knees, his shirt rolled up to his elbows, he's stirring the pesticide with his, with his hand, and then he got a leaky spray can. Everything that he's not supposed to do, praying into the wind, um, getting pesticides all in his face in it, in it, because he doesn't have on a respirator or a hat. Um, these are things that actually happen in the field. And Kuldip, if you recall, some time ago we were doing some series on, on, on safe handling and use of pesticides, and, and we actually saw guys doing that. Have you found that the, there, there is more awareness, perhaps, on the part of farmers to, to be safer in handling and use of pesticides? Yes, definitely.